Hello, uh, welcome to the lecture, uh, online lecture again. Yeah. Today we will talk about photosynthesis. Well, um, just to give you a brief introduction before we start, um, we, on Wednesday we talk about cellular respiration. Cellular respiration, the main purpose of it is to make ATP. What about photosynthesis? Photosynthesis, the main purpose of it is to make glucose. And if you understand my Wednesday lecture about cellular respiration, photosynthesis will be very easy because photosynthesis is the exact opposite of the cellular respiration. Um, we will, today we will briefly talk about the uh, uh, energy carrier and the overview of the two photosynthesis and cellular respiration is like comparing the two. And then we'll talk about the uh, steps in photosynthesis. First, we need to talk about producers. Producers, we need to define producers. They are the one that they can make, um, they can make food by themselves. We call them producers. An example are uh, mainly uh, plants, algae, and bacteria. And uh, of course, they make food by photosynthesis. And the, as I told you, that the main purpose of photosynthesis is to make glucose. So all these plant, algae, and uh, bacteria, they can make glucose by themselves. For consumers, well, as the name suggested, they cannot make uh, food by themselves. That's why they need to eat the producers or they eat other consumers. So uh, consumers, the only thing they do is the cellular respiration. But I want to clarify one point. Producers, they also do cellular respiration. So both producers and consumers, they do cellular respiration. But only producer can do photosynthesis to make food by themselves. Consumers, they again they eat producers and they eat other uh, consumers. Well, the two questions here they are pretty good. First one is that can animal exist without plants? The question is uh, very simple. No. The reason is that plants they are producers. If there's no producers to su supply food, then consumer can no longer, then consumer cannot, uh, cannot survive. You may think that, okay, consumer can eat other consumers, right? And how come, how come, um, how come we cannot survive? Because even though consumer can eat other consumers, we still need to eat producers. Because when, con when, when we cannot make our own food, then uh, because all consumers cannot make, make the food, um, then if there's no one make the food, then eventually all consumers will die. Next question is that can plants exist without animals? The answer is also no. I will explain to you in the next few slides. First of all, this is a very good picture because it shows that Photosynthesis and cellular respiration, they are, uh, they are, I would call it, it's like a circle of life, or they, they complement each other. What happens is that the input of photosynthesis, namely water and carbon dioxide, is actually the output of cellular respiration. So, photosynthesis used uh, take in water and carbon dioxide and then make glucose and oxygen. And cellular respiration take in glucose and oxygen and then they make carbon dioxide and water. And the energy used in photosynthesis is actually sunlight. And the energy released from cellular respiration, namely ATP. Remember, the main purpose of cellular respiration is to make ATP. So that is the energy released. And these two are very good definition in that photosynthesis uh, is to use the light energy, light energy to make a sugar. Sugar is the main product of photosynthesis. The byproduct, byproduct meaning is the product that is unintentionally uh, made. 
is oxygen gas for cellular respiration uh, it, it is for releasing energy the energy that is being released is called ATP again and the byproduct, the unintentional product is carbon dioxide and water Hold on just a minute. So this is what I meant the circle of life. Um, Well, sunlight is the ultimate energy uh, on Earth, and then the plant absorbs the sunlight and then use it for photosynthesis to make food, to make glucose, not only for consumers but also for themselves. Yes, the plant make use uh, use photosynthesis. Originally, they make glucose for themselves to support themselves. Why? Because plant they also do cellular respiration. Yes, plants do photosynthesis to make glucose for themselves to use for their own cellular respiration, to make ATP to support their life. But then, they are consumer, like animals will eat the plants because they make a lot of sugar, they make too much sugar for themselves, then we, why don't we eat them? So we eat the glucose produced by the plant so that we can use it for our, our cellular respiration to make ATP. The second question, uh, can plant live without animal? The question is uh, no. The reason is that um, although plant they do both photosynthesis and cellular respiration, if there is no animal, eventually plant will deplete or use up all the uh, uh, carbon dioxide and water uh, in in, in, on Earth. Uh, I would say especially carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide, uh, plant will use up all the carbon dioxide on Earth, then in this case they will not have uh, the input to make uh, glucose. That's why they need, they also need animal to produce enough carbon dioxide for them to carry out photosynthesis. So again, ATP, as we learned from the cellular respiration, it is the energy unit for, uh, all, for all the living organisms. So in here it says that uh, energy input from photosynthesis or cellular respiration. Uh, you may ask, hey, but you keep on saying that photosynthesis uh, uses, uh, the main purpose of photosynthesis is to make glucose. How come we said that um, uh, uh, there is an energy input for that. Let me see. Yeah, you said that I, I you may say that I, I keep emphasizing that photosynthesis, the main purpose of photosynthesis is to make glucose, and the main purpose of photo, uh, cellular respiration is to make ATP. So, in here, yes. Cellular respiration make ATP, but how do photosynthesis also make ATP? Um, photosynthesis make ATP. Uh, photosynthesis has two reactions. First one is called light reaction. Second one is called Kelvin cycle. In the first light reaction, photosynthesis actually make ATP. Why? Because they need to use the ATP they make from the first first step to use it in the second step. The second step, Kelvin cycle, uses ATP to make glucose. So that's the main reason we said that photosynthesis also make ATP, but they use the ATP that they make uh, during the photosynthesis to make glucose in the second step. And here, it said that ATP, we use ATP for 
the cellular activity, meaning that all living organisms, including plants, uses ATP for their everyday uh, activity. For us, we use ATP, let's say, moving, talking, or uh, trying to understand the lecture. But for plants, they use ATP to grow, uh, to, um, to, to, to produce, uh, to make flowers, you know, so on and so forth. And remember, in cellular respiration, we have high energy electron carrier. One of them is called NADH. In photosynthesis, we use NADPH. So one way to have you memorize is that um, both, uh, uh, so plant uh, do photosynthesis and they use NADPH, or with the word P. So plants start with P. Plants do photosynthesis. Photosynthesis start with, also with P. Uh, plants do photosynthesis uh, with NADPH. So everything starts with P. But uh, just to uh, tell you the, uh, the word P, the, the alphabet P in here actually stands for phosphate. So here it tells you the differences between NADPH and NADH. NADPH um, it is for anabolic, meaning that it is for building up, building up what? It is for making uh, glucose. NADH is for catabolic pathway. Remember I told you that Professor Fink told us that catabolic cat is like breaking down everything. So catabolic pathway is uh, breaking down something. What does it break down? It breaks down uh, glucose molecule to make uh, energy. Because when you break the bond, then uh, when you break the covalent bond, then energy will be released. That's why you call it catabolic pathway. So uh, NADH is uh, for breaking down the covalent bond to make energy. But NADPH is to uh, make a glucose molecule. So we have this overview of the photosynthesis. So photosynthesis, of, we have two, it has two stages, I already told you that. First one is called light reaction, second one is called Kelvin cycle. Kelvin cycle actually has three names. Uh, you can call it dox reaction, or you can call it carbon fixation. The reason we call it carbon fixation, because uh, Kelvin cycle takes in carbon dioxide, and it takes the carbon atom from the carbon dioxide in order to make the glucose. That's why I call carbon fixation. And this picture basically summarizes uh, photosynthesis. And the input and output here is the overall of the photosynthesis. Photosynthesis takes in light energy, carbon dioxide and water in order to make sugar and oxygen gas. So let's talk about the uh, light reaction, the first, first stage. Uh, as I wrote in here, light reaction is basically in converting or splitting water into oxygen gas. And the light and it takes in the light energy and in order to make ATP and NADPH for the uh, next stage to use. So here it tells you the same thing here. Uh, light energy, when we take in light energy, we use it to split the water molecule and then the hydrogen atom will become hydrogen ion. Hydrogen ion will combine with NADP to become NADPH. That's where the H comes from. And then um, we also use it to make uh, ATP in here uh, with the light energy. We will talk more the process of making ATP in detail in the next few slices, it has a lot of, uh, you have some steps to go through. And the light reaction uh, is mainly, the light energy is mainly absorbed by the chlorophyll in the chloroplast. 
and analyze the water molecule, and then so that we will have the uh, so that it, the water molecule will be converted into oxygen gas, and uh, also it will provide the hydrogen ion, which is a uh, proton, for the NADP to become NADPH. So it tells you that um, it helps to generate the NADPH. Kelvin cycle. Kelvin cycle uses a lot of enzyme to make to convert the carbon dioxide into uh, glucose. So as you can see that uh, uh, in this step, Kelvin cycle uses carbon dioxide and then it uses the ATP and NADPH from the light reaction here to provide the energy to make uh, glucose from carbon dioxide. So before we talk about um, uh, uh, the actual steps or sequence for the photosynthesis, uh, we'll talk about some basics about light. Light, they are photons. Uh, photons, they are massless particle. So they are particle, but they are also a, form, a kind of wave. They have both characteristic of particle and wave. And, um, Photon, of course, they carry uh, energy, light energy, and we call this an electromagnetism or electromagnetic spectrum. So what what it says in here, light, a uh, short wavelength and stuff. So this one, seven hundred nanometer, is this relatively long wavelength. The longer the wavelength, the um, the longer the wavelength, the less energy the light carries. So, um, for example, uh, infrared ray, uh, uh, radio wave, or microwave, all these, they are um, long wavelength, but they carry less energy. On the other extreme end, the purple light, they have shorter wavelength, or the UV light here, X-ray and gamma ray, they have even shorter wavelength. But they have they carry a lot more energy. So much energy that we can use X-ray to go through our body. When X-ray go through our body, then we can see what is inside our body. That's why um, infrared ray, uh, radio wave, or microwave, they cannot go through our body because they have low energy. So the visible light, as the name suggests, is the light spectrum that we can see. In other words, we cannot see infrared light, we cannot, we cannot see infrared light, we cannot see radio wave, we cannot see microwave. Also, we cannot see UV light, we cannot see X-ray, we cannot see gamma ray. So, uh, how come leaf looks green? The main reason is that the coral feel, the pigment inside the leaf, they only absorb blue and red light. So leaving the green light, uh, they cannot absorb. When they cannot absorb green light, then they repel or reflect the, uh, the green light. That's why you can see it green. Similarly, apple. Apple absorb uh, green and purple or light, but, but they cannot absorb red light. When they cannot absorb red light, they repel or reflect the red light. That's why we see the apple as red. Last but not least, the grape and the blueberry is the same. They cannot absorb a blue or purple light, but they can absorb red and green light. That's why they repel or reflect the purple light or blue light. So, um, the structure of the leaf is basically uh, to maximize the photosynthesis or absorption of the light. Why? So this is the top part of the leaf. This is the bottom part of the leaf. At uh, the surface, we have the epi, epi, epidermis, epithelium, epidermis. We have the epidermis there. And then after that, we have this. We call it polycyte mesophere. The polycyte mesophere, they are rectangular cell that they can tightly pack and inside each uh, cell they have a lot of uh, 
chloroplast. The tight lip pack, uh, polyset method will fill with a lot of chloroplast, is to allow maximum uh, absorption of the light. On the other hand, we call this a spongy mesophyll. As you can see that the spongy mesophyll, the cell, they are in irregular shape, they are more rounded, and they also have a lot of space there. That's why we call it spongy mesophyll. Spongy mesophyll also have chloroplasts. They can also do uh, uh, photosynthesis. But the space, empty space there is for this to facilitate uh, gas, uh, gaseous exchange, uh, meaning the carbon dioxide and oxygen. And then in, in the lower epi, epidermis here, we have uh, something called stoma. Stoma is the singular for air hole. The plural of the stoma is uh, stomata. They are made by special cells. Um, when the weather is cold or cool, or, and, and, and when the temperature is low and, and, it, is, and, the, and, the, and it is humid, then the, this stoma will be open. For example, for example, most of the leaves, they will open their stomata at night. But in daytime, when the temperature is high, and it is relatively dry, then the stoma will be the stomata will be closed to minimize the loss of the uh, moisture or water. And carbon dioxide can go in to the stoma to diffuse into the cell for photosynthesis. So this is just a schematic diagram. So we have leaves and then the cross section of the leaf, you can see the polyset mesophyll. Inside the polyset mesophyll, we have uh, the cell organelles. One of them is the chloroplast. The chloroplast is also a double membrane structure, just like mitochondria. And inside the uh, in there's a space or the fluid field space we call it stroma. Remember, in mitochondria, we call that matrix. But in the chloroplast, we call it stroma. And then we have this, we call it thylakoid. So um, remember I mentioned that thylakoid, they are like poker chips. So each poker chip is the thylakoid. And then a stack of poker chip, we call it a granna. Um, granna, granna, sorry, granna. And then multiple stacks of poker chip, we call it granna. So in the chloroplast, uh, in the thylakoid, we have the chlorophyll there. So the thylakoid membrane has all this what we call antenna complex. Antenna complex is connected to something called a, a photosystem. Uh, these antenna complex, they are actually uh, they have the pigment called uh, carotenoid and chlorophyll A and B. In bio-3B lab, you will um, you will scotch a leaf on a, on a piece of filter paper so that there will be a green line on the piece of filter paper. And then you put this filter paper into uh, something called... Uh, uh, we will use this filter paper for paper chromatography so that you can split the uh, color, this green line you, you scotch from the uh, leaf into a different color pigment. Then you are able, you theoretically, you should be able to identify carotenoid, chlorophyll A and B from on that filter paper. So what happened is that uh, uh, we will talk more about this in the next few slides, the details. The antenna complex, the uh, photopigment on the antenna complex, they absorb light and then they will, uh, the light energy will provide a high energy electron for the electron transport chain in the photosystem. So it is here what I meant.
This, the light energy will be absorbed by the uh, pigment molecule, namely chlorophyll or carotenoid, and then um, in the antenna complex. And then after that, it will, uh, the, these, color, these pigment molecules, they will, uh, because they absorb the light energy, they will produce uh, a high energy electron. High energy electron will be transferred into pho photosystem 2. And this is a little bit counterintuitive because it is the photosystem 2 to start the uh, reaction first. And the photosystem 1 follows the photosystem 2. And then the, pig, the, the, the high energy electron from the uh, pigment molecule in the antenna complex will be transferred into photosystem 2. Photosystem 2, they have electron transport chain that can carry the electron, go through this. It is very similar to the electron transport chain in the cellular respiration. And then in the middle of the, um, this uh, membrane protein, they will, they will have something to do. When they get the electron, then they will do some, it's like pumping the hydrogen ion again, just like in the cellular respiration. After they finish pumping the cellular, uh, the hydrogen ion, they will pass the high energy electron to the photosystem 1. Or, and also the, 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 the antenna system from the photosystem will also absorb sunlight as well to produce the uh, electron. What they do is that they also pass through this uh, electron, uh, electron transport chain. At the end of the electron transport chain, they uh, they will make uh, NADPH, yeah. So uh, we will talk about this in the next few slices. So what happened is that in the, so sunlight hit the antenna system of the photosystem 2, and then it will produce a high energy electron, and the photosystem 2 use this high energy electron to split the water molecule into oxygen and hydrogen ion, but at the same time, when it is splitting the water molecule, it will also produce a high energy electron. In other words, the photosystem 2 use the high energy electron from sunlight, or not from the pigment. The pigment absorb the sunlight and then produce this high energy electron. To split the water molecule into oxygen, gas, uh, hydrogen ion, and the, and other high energy electron. Then the electron transport chain uses the high energy electron from splitting the water uh, to pass through this uh, electron transport chain. As the membrane protein get the high energy electron, what they do is that they will start pumping a, a hydrogen ion which is shown in the next slide. They will start pumping the hydrogen ion from the stroma into the thylakoid. So they will keep pumping it. Remember in the cellular respiration, it, it was the opposite. The uh, membrane protein on the uh, Christi, uh, on, the, on the inner membrane, is that they will pump the hydrogen ion from the matrix into from the matrix outside to outside to the intermembrane space. Here it is different. It is the opposite. It pumps the hydrogen ion from the stroma from outside into the thyroid, inside the thyroid. And then after that, uh, the high energy electron will be passed to photosystem one, and also the antenna system, the pigment will also uh, provide electron to the photosystem 1 as well. And then this, the high energy electron from photosystem 1 will also go through another uh, electron transport chain. At the end of the electron transport chain, uh, the high energy electron will combine with NADP and hydrogen ion in order to make NADPH which is the high energy electron carrier that is used by 
um, that will be used in the second step, the Kelvin cycle. So it, it, this is what this is where NADPH is made in the light reaction. So light reaction make NADPH um, at the end of the second electron transport chain in photosystem one. So the last step of the light, light reaction is that, uh, remember, we in the first electron transport chain of the photosystem 2, we pump a lot of uh, hydrogen ion into the thylakoid. And in this case, we establish a, they call it a proton gradient. It's basically a concentration difference, a concentration difference between uh, uh, a concentration difference of the hydrogen ion between the inside of the thyroid and stroma. So inside of the thyroid, we have high hydrogen ion concentration, but in the stroma, we have the low concentration of the hydrogen ion. So in other words, naturally, hydrogen ion they want to move outside of the thyroid by diffusion. But because it is ion, they cannot go through the phospholipid bilayer. Then they need the help. The help will be a membrane protein. So they need to go through this membrane protein in order to, to have the diffusion. Because they go through the membrane protein in order to carry out diffusion, we call it facilitated diffusion. And this membrane protein is also known as ATP synthase. It is the same ATP synthase that we learned from the cellular respiration. As the hydrogen ion going through the ATP synthase, going down the concentration gradient, because it goes down the concentration gradient, it does not require any energy. The movement of this ion does not require any energy, but the movement of this ion provide energy for the ATP synthase to make ATP. So it is very similar to the analogy that I told you in the cellular respiration that the hydroelectricity. So as water going from the top of the hill going downhill, then the movement of water can move a turbine. The movement of the turbine will, will power, uh, will make the electricity. Similarly, the movement of the hydrogen ion here from inside the thyroid to outside to the stroma will provide enough energy for the uh, ATP synthase to make ATP. And the ATP we make in here, uh, in the light reaction, will also be used for the Kelvin cycle. So we now know that the we make NAD pH and ATP in the light reaction, and then it will be used in the Kelvin cycle. So the NADPH we make at the end of the electron transport chain of photosyn photosystem 1. And also the ATP um, uh, we make from the ATP synthase. They all will be used in the uh, Kelvin cycle. Now let's start. So let's stop here. Let's start with the second video.